Alrighty, what's up y'all? Welcome to the channel and welcome to all Reynolds and noobs checking me out for the first time. So, uh, as you can see, Onyx here is in a, a little bit of disrepair. She's a, 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 on a down day. Um, unfortunately for me, my magnetic tire syndrome kicked in again and I picked up another straggler um, doing what I normally do. Just going to freaking work. Like I put my bike in fields. I go checking out graffiti and murals and throwing all that stuff up to Instagram and nothing. I work and I come home, spiking my tire. Freaking, it just upsets me. So I've already got the tire fixed. My dude's down at Rosenau Power Sports. Um, patched me up again for the third time. Not the third patch on this tire. Obviously, I've got new tires, but I had two patches in my last tire, one patch in this tire. They hooked me up. Um, but I gotta throw the tire back on and adjust the braces, get the chain right, and Onyx will be back on the road. But that is not the subject matter of this video because had I put the tire on, I'd have just rolled off because I would rather ride than make a video. So I figured I would do this while the tire is off and the bike is just sitting here waiting for surgery. A uh, Tonnet member uh, asked, how to remove the fairings on their bike, the exact same bike as me. So I said, screw it. I will try to make a video rather than try to explain it through text because I can be a little wordy and it might not make sense. So a visual would be much better. Interrupt me while I'm videoing. And uh, let's just get to it. I've already got my tools set out. Everything you need is actually in the tool kit for the bike that comes with it from the manufacturer. Um, I just prefer to use my DeWalt kit because DeWalt kit's awesome. I got a regular old screwdriver and a tiny little flathead. I have a interchangeable screwdriver. And uh, I got a VR or V6. This is V6 size and this is V4, correct. These are the main two sizes that will be in use on this bike. On the heat shield side, you will need a slightly smaller one, so I gotta grab that one, but it's not too much difference. Um, unfortunately, I cannot do the non-heat shield side because as you can see, the bike is in a awkward position and I cannot maneuver it right now to stick it out in the middle of the garage so that I can uh, do the non-heat shield side. Actually, this side is a little harder harder as in one more thing to take off which it's not difficult at all so I'm going to start from the very beginning what you need to do is take the fairings off of this here bike so you get your key shove it in the keyhole if you can find it remove passenger seat we'll have two bolts holding down the seat for the driver you put your passenger seat over here next to your saw and you take your V4, six, this is the big one, this is the big one. And you remove these two bolts. Freaking neighbors making noise while I'm trying to make a video. It's very annoying. Take your pass or driver's seat, remove it. Place it in a safe location. Keep the parts together so you don't lose them. Just put the key down there. Now you have access to remove this panel. Now you can remove the uh, bolt for this panel, but the seat kind of the lip of the seat sits over this piece and it makes it very hard to remove. You can do it, let's just do it the proper way. So, you take this guy, remove this bolt here. And by the way, this is the tool kit for the motorcycle. It even has the Allen wrenches that are large enough to adjust the chain tension and remove the bolt that holds on the rear wheel axle. Okay, place this on my handy blanket so it doesn't roll away. And you come up here to the front. Like there is no specific order to do this in. You just have to make sure that whatever order you do it in, you just do it backwards. 
and you'd be good to go. So this is a separate piece of fairing. This individual gray piece comes off by itself and it has a different colored bolt so you don't really have to worry about mixing them up. They've all got these little semi-opaque plastic spacers. Washers, spacers, these guys. Very easy to lose. Okay, now the tricky part comes with using this little flathead. This guy is a push pin. It is a bearing holder, trim pin, whatever you want to call it. They sell them by the ton because people break them all the time because they don't know how to get about. What you do is you push the center in. You should hear a click or a little dupe, and that's a spider. That's that's crazy. And then you take your screwdriver and you pry this little guy up just like that, and it comes right out. I mean, it comes right out. I broke the one on the other side because. I was getting a little too uh, enthusiastic one day, but when you go to place them back in, all you do is set them back in the hole, and then you depress this until it's flush with the center, and then your piece is locked in. It's much like a wall anchor. The sides expand out, and you're good to go. But all you gotta do is pull it. Those sides collapse into the channels, and then you can pop it right out. Very easy to take these guys off. Now, this can be a little daunting if you've done it for the first time or doing it for the first. This spider is really running laps on my bike. There are friction pins, um, rubber grommets that hold in this part of the fairing. So you want to get some gusto and you want to pull out towards you. There's one, two, and three. There's one here and there's one here. And then you want to take the sharper part of the fairing and slide it forward. Boom ski. So this guy, this guy, and this guy correspond to that hole, that hole, and that hole. Comes right off. All right, take your 1000 banner and you stick it over here on your floor tile because you're not done with your kitchen yet. And then of course you would take a screwdriver or whatever you can do to get these things off. It freaking hurts. Oh, my man thumb did it, yay. Um, and you take, uh, you pull the light out because the light is attached to the fairing which you're gonna be removing. This bolt. Yeah, am I crazy? I mean, I am, but not that crazy. Okay, yeah. This bolt holds the fairing in. So you're gonna get your four. This video is much longer than it has to be because I'm yapping, but I want you to get the full yap experience because you deserve it. And of course, you can just do this by hand. Hopefully I get all this right on the first try because it's been a quick minute since I took the fairings off. Haven't taken these puppies off since I did the exhaust. And the only bolt I'm really worried about is this, this black guy. Got to worry about the black guy. Take this one. Take it off. They are all the same size. This one sits on very much like the first fairing I took off. held on a little bit of pressure so you pop it off don't be scared it's gonna make noise it's got the same pin set up here and here they go up in here and up in here so you set this on your floor tile because you haven't finished your kitchen yet and you come over and then you get your V4 <coughs> and you unscrew this guy Now when you're tightening these back and up, uh, tightening these back up, I do not have a torque spec for these, which is very rare for me because I'm Mr. Torque Spec. Um, you just don't want to crank them down to where you're breaking the plastics. You have to remember that this is plastic. Whatever you do, take your time and do not rush taking your fairings off because you will be upset with yourself. This is the V6. Rubber grommet on the fairing itself, put it in your pile. This little guy I gotta get, I don't remember what size that baby was. Uh, well, how about I bring the toolkit with me? Yeah. I should have had this repaired, but I didn't, so what is? Nope. 
is uh, eels v3 okay Okay, so you take your V3 and you remove the heat shield, which is protecting your shins from your fairings or from your exhaust. Pop the heat shield off the bottom of the fairing. This can be a little scary. Um, my washers are falling off. I had to pile washers on this thing because the aftermarket exhaust is a little skinnier than the factory. So, these guys, right here, these little rubber grommets hold on to that heat shield, and there's one right here. So when you put these things back on, you know, you can use some spit, some soapy water, or Windex, just to get them back in there. I would not use grease, because they will work themselves back out. You only want it to be lubed up to get into the bike and not out. So, these guys... Another set of fairing holders. There is a depression filled with dirt uh, for a screwdriver. You want to get a larger screwdriver because that skinny one will cut into your plastics. So you take this guy, you put it into the depression, and then you twist. Take your fingers, yank that baby out, set it in your pile. There's also another one directly under the fairing. I don't know if this camera's picking up, but I'll get another shot. Same technique. Take it, pull it out. They will separate sometimes, but you just plop it back in there. Dang it, went too far. This one is not as easy as the little ones. Um, well, maybe it is. Not really that quick. So now, loose fairings, a couple rocks. This side is mostly loose. Now, this guy. It's held on by a little lip here. This comes up and over. And there should be, I think, I think that's it. Uh, it's been such a long while, I don't want to rush it. But both sides are pretty much identical. Okay, so I think it's pretty loose. Now, the one problem you run into are these little pins. Uh, get my flashlight here. Huh? You guys can see them. This guy. So, in order for me to get the side off that I'm working on, I have to be over here in order to push the pin in, pop it out, and it releases this fairing. This fairing. This lip here. Oh, dang. I didn't line it up the last time I put my fairing. What kind of shoddy work like I can do it from here I can catch it eh, I can't see my face is stupid there we go there was that violent click I was talking about I have no idea if these camera glasses are picking this up I'm also glad I'm doing this on the bottom of my bike because I'm scratching it to all hell okay yee almost died I'm gonna put these guys over here uh, just simply because I don't want to mix them up the other clips there's three total two at the top one down here at the bottom I'll try to get a better shot with my cell phone or something so you guys can actually see I do not like doing it this way because it's such a bad angle it hurts my back meat but I obviously can achieve it and then there's one down here which I normally can't find I just found oh, I'm a champ. Champ sauce. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Should be loosey goosey. I do believe. Man, I'm getting rocks all over the place. Okay. Now, I have to be extra careful because my fairings have lights on them. Is that the one? 
No, that's not. Can I teach somebody something? There we go. Yeah, another pressure clip. So, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Right here. I'll show you once I get the fairing pulled off. Now that I'm confident, so it comes and it will pivot. It's not releasing from the front plastic. Trying to make me look stupid. I released the wrong one. Oh, duh. So, don't miss the giant bolt that I kept looking at but never loosened. forced to hold the fairing because I don't want it to pivot forward and break because I was not paying attention to what I was doing. Huzzah! Oh, finagle is real. So these little guys make moving your fairings a bit difficult. You can pull them off. They're little like Christmas trees. You pinch a man with a set of pliers or your fingers that guy off like that and now you're free to move around like I said my fairings are held on by lights right now my LEDs um, pretty much are the only things holding the fairing on right now this job will probably take hmm, less than 10 minutes seven minutes or so and then you got your fairings off the process is exactly the same for the other side and uh, the reason you had to take those two bolts off those retaining clips was for this guy and this guy because it is attached to the fairing for the cowl of the bike. The bottom one, uh, that's a mistake. I mistakenly took that one off. So you don't need to take the bottom one off. But I don't want to pull these things out any farther. Well, that's how you do it. You pretty much can get down to wherever you need uh, for your job by taking the fairings off of this guy to this point. Um, Without the lights, the bike would be completely naked on the right side right now. And I would be able to access anything I needed to access over here. If I needed to change the coolant, inspect the radiator itself, mess around with the clutch. There's the clutch cable. Um, the other side would be the stator, of course, and the idle adjustment for the engine idle speed. So, with all this yapping, I'm gonna bud my bike back up. I'm gonna put the tire on, give her a nice wash down, some spray with some SC1 top coat, uh, high gloss coating, and uh, call it a day. So hopefully this video was a little educational. I know it was a little back and forth. I didn't prep. I just started shooting and uh, actually forgot about a couple bolts that I had to remind myself of just now. So. There you go. Other than that, the job's not hard. You just have to be patient, um, especially when you're going in reverse and putting your parts back on. This guy will break. I didn't break it. It's not broken, but it will break. It sits in a channel up here, and that bolt kind of holds it on. And when you're trying to finagle it in, just slowly back and forth, slowly back and forth, it will find its home and then you can put your parts back on. Do not rush this. You're gonna be mad. You're gonna be upset. You're gonna be sweaty. You're gonna be cursing. You gotta, you're gonna be me. You don't wanna do that. Catch you guys later. Okay you guys, forgot something as usual. This is the SAE connector that I was talking about um, that I use my wireless quad lock charger on uh, just in case any of you guys were wondering this has a 7.5 amp fuse it came with this fuse um, why I have two of these I don't know but you can just google fused um, SAE connector I don't remember where I got this one so you know what screw it I'll just look it up and I'll put a link to one in the description 
but of course this one goes to the hot this one goes to the negative these are ring terminals you can tell that because they're shaped like rings you place them on your battery either the side or the top and this little guy in case this guy starts to act up or anything in the chain the fuse is as close to the battery as possible to cut the power to make sure that I don't get zapped my bike doesn't get zapped danger averted um, I believe the quad lock charger pulls about 5 amps. I could have put a 5 amp fuse in here, uh, in the one in the bike, but pulling 5 amps over a 5 amp fuse, eh, it, it'll work. But sometimes that fuse will get a little warm because it might be right at the limit or one of those things. You're supposed to be able to pull 5 amps over a 5 amp fuse. It's supposed to have some tolerance before it blows, but throwing a 7.5 amp in there gives me that extra wiggle room in case one day this thing decides to just, oh, I want to pull a little bit more power and then it doesn't blow the fuse but if it starts to pull seven amps it's way too much fuse initiates itself or kills itself zaps and then bike is safe so most of this fairing removal was for the demonstration of how i got the fairings off in order to install the wireless charger except i installed and ran the cable on the opposite side in the same channel just over there um, this side of the bike is harder to take off only because of the heat shield the fairings um, are extremely hard to take off if you don't pay attention and take off the bolt that's staring you right in the face but they're not hard to take off at all as a job this should only take a few minutes but you just again have to be careful when you're removing your plastic parts because ordering a whole fairing for one little thing that got broke it's a pain and like I showed you before the channels on the front of this fairing slide back into place there is a notch here if you can't line it up stick your face back there see what you're missing and then try to line it up eyeballing it instead of trying to feel for it, it it'll save you some frustration um, then your bolt holes will line up you cinch those babies down these are um, rubber grommets with screws in them they will tighten up but they will keep spinning if you over tighten them so just get some good pressure on there um, not over tighten this guy's into the frame itself still don't over tighten because you will crack the fairing and then that's about it guys water spit Windex to get your stuff back in the grommets and now I think I'm done yapping catch you guys later